the time value of money is a critical topic in corporate finance, in financial management, also um, in investment analysis. So we're going to look at how to apply time value of money. So I'm going to give you scenario questions that will require you to apply the principles that I will start with. So to start with, would you rather have a thousand kwacha now or a thousand kwacha tomorrow? Obviously, everyone would say a thousand kwacha now because of the aspect of time value of money. So now I'm going to elaborate how time is money using concepts of interest. So interest in this context will be looked at in terms of the simple interest, which is given by P times T times R. This is called simple interest, where the principal is the present value, the money we start with now. Then the time, time in years. So then the rate is the interest rate which in this case is a nominal interest rate. So together we have what we call a simple interest. Then we also have what is called compound interest, which is simply given by the difference between the future value and the present value. And the compound interest, the future value is simply given by present value, one plus R the power of time. If it's compounded more than once, the future value is given by the present value, one plus R over M over MT. Now MT, M is the number of compoundings. To compound is to end interest or to accrue interest. So you can end interest uh, annually, which is once in a year, semi-annually, which is twice in a year, quarterly, which is four times in a year, uh, monthly, which is 12 times in a year. We can also end interest weekly. How many, time, how many weeks do we have in a year? Fifty-two. Fifty-two. Okay, so 52, and daily, how many days we have in a year? 365. These are the possible ways in which we can earn or accrue interest. So there's also what we call the effective annual interest rate, which we have, it is simply given by one plus R over M, then we have MT, the effective annual rate. What is an effective annual rate? Has somebody ever heard of it? So effective annual rate is the most accurate rate that measures the cost or the interest or yield that you have on an investment. So it's given by that formula. So I will use the effective annual rate to explain a few things later on, but for now, I can explain it as the annual equivalent rate, which is a financial concept used to calculate the annual interest that takes into account compounding. So it provides a more accurate measure of the true costs or yield of a financial product, like savings, loan, investment, compounded more than once a year. If we're dealing with once, a year, we use this annual formula. We also have what we call annuities. Annuities are used when we are making periodic payments on a regular basis. We've heard of annuities. Examples of any annuities, <laughs>
What annuities? So an annuity is a series of eco periodic payments that is made either at the beginning of the year, quarterly or monthly. Okay, but the key thing is it has a fixed amount that is paid periodically. So these annuities can be at the beginning or at the end of a period. So an annuity is simply a financial product that requires a series of equal payments made at regular intervals, monthly, quarterly, annually, these payments can be fixed or variable. So if they're made at the beginning, we call them the annuity due. If they're made at the end of a period, it's called what? Ordinary annuity. So for each of these ones, we have both the present value and the future value of an annuity. So these amounts, whenever you see periodic payments that are made at the beginning or at the end, we know that these are annuities. But annuities due, we always multiply the values we are going to get times 1 plus R. So this is called a present value and annuity due. And we have a future value annuity due when you simply multiply it by R. Future value of an annuity due. Examples of annuities could be what? Rentals, mortgages, um, premium, insurance premiums, loan repayment, all these are annuities. So these are periodically paid. The formula for the present value of an annuity is simply given as follows. You can use a table or the formulas that I'm going to give you here. So one minus is called the annuity of a present value. Let's master these two formulas. The other one, we have a periodic payment, and we have one plus R to the power N plus one everything over R. So this is the future value of an annuity. Okay, so let me give you basic examples, then we go to the quiz. Suppose you have a present value of a thousand kwacha. The interest rate we have ten percent. Then the time we have three years. Number one, let's calculate the simple interest. Who remembers what's the formula for the simple interest? PTR. Okay, so we have 1000 for the principal. The time is three years, and the time is what? 10%. So the future value we're going to have after three years will be 300 quarts. That's the interest. So the 300, when we add it to the initial amount that we had, the present value as a simple interest, what we get is what? The future value. So 1,000 that we had plus the interest on it, 300. So the future value we're going to have is 1,300. Okay, part two, we're being asked to calculate the compound interest. We know that compound interest is simply the difference between a future amount that we expect minus the present value that we have now. So future value, if it's annual, who remembers the formula? Present value, one plus R to the power time. So we have a thousand quarter here and the interest rate is 10% and the time is three years. So can somebody help me calculate that? 
1.10 to the power 3. What do we get? What are we getting? One thousand three hundred and thirty one. Okay, one thousand three hundred and thirty one. Confirmed. All right. So, meaning in this case, what is the simple uh, compound interest? The future value, which is one thousand three hundred and thirty one, minus the initial value, which is one thousand. So we're going to get a compound interest of 300 and what? At one. So which one is higher? Simple interest or compound interest? We are seeing ourselves having a higher value under compound interest. So far we together. So if we have this present value, for instance, which is the same 1000, the interest rate is 10% and the time in years is three years. So they are asking us to find the future value after three years if compounded annually. Uh, compounded annually, we have found it was what? 1331. How about the future value? After three years, if compounded semi-annually, what happens? What format do we use? If it's more than once, remember the formula that we use? Present value, one plus R over M, then MT. So semi-annually means our M is what? Two. So here our future value therefore will be 1,000 that we have. Then our interest rate is 10%. Then our M is two, which we bring here, and the three years there. Are we following? Then here our value will be power six. So what are we getting? This, I don't have my calculator here, so you assist me by quickly responding. Because 30 minutes just for you to get the content work, then we go to the quiz way directly. So it's giving us 1,340. 1,340. So it has increased from 331, you are seeing. Then what is the effective annual rate if it's semi annually? Who remembers the form of semi uh, effective annual rate? 1 plus R over M, M minus 1. Take note that effective annual rate does not take account of the present value, neither with it the time. So this is the real interest rate that we have. So we have 1 plus 0 0.10 over 2, power 2 minus 1. So this is 1.05 minus 1. So what do we have as an effective annual rate here?
Quickly, you shouldn't take time to 1.05. Pardon? 10.25%. 10 10 That's what you get. So this is the effective annual rate. Remember what I said, effective annual rate is a real rate and or accrued on an investment. Now, suppose you are asked how long you are looking for time. So how long will a thousand parts are triple? The triple is to go three times. How long will a thousand quarter go to three thousand at an interest rate of eight percent compounded annually? What are they asking for? Time. So remember the formula, future value is got what? Present value, one plus R to the power what? Time. So three thousand is got one thousand. 1.08 since 8 percent the power time if you don't know so you can divide on both sides you're going to have a three there so if you introduce logs only a log can drop a power so log three is equal to t times log 1.08 so how do you find t in this case by dividing both sides by 1.08. Okay. So you divide log 3 divided by log 1.08. What do we get? One point eight six is it? I don't have a calculator. Can somebody assist with that? Log three divided by log one point zero eight. And a fourteen point two seven. This is amount of time that it will take for a thousand to triple. Lastly, how long or what rate will a thousand quarter take to double? Double is how many years? Double is how uh, times two. Okay. At what rate? In four years, we a thousand quarter double if compounded annually. So we're just using subject of a formula. So future value is equal to present value one plus R. So we have two thousand here, we have one thousand there. We don't have the rate, but we have a time there. For this to cancel, we are going to have two, one plus R, the power four. So whenever we have a, a, an exponent there to remove this, we reciprocate. So one over four here, one over four there. So this cancels. So two to the power one over four. One over four is sum as 0.25 if you like. So to find R, these will come and subtract there. So our error will be 2 to the power 0 0.25 minus 1 times 100, of course. What are you getting? Two to the power. So 0.25 minus 1, we're going to have 18.92%. All right, then also you'll be asked to calculate the present value. How much do I need now if I need 
to save for 5,000 at a rate of 6.5% in two years. So the subject formula, if compounded annually. So future value is equal to present value, one plus R to the power of time. So here we have 5,000, present value we don't have, the interest rate is 6%. 1.065 to the power 2. We divide both sides, 1.065 squared, 1.065 squared. So these cancels. So we divide one, th uh, we divide 5,000 divided by 1.065 squared. So our answer should be smaller. So present value therefore will be 4,408.30. All right. Then also the last two, suppose we have the same present value, which is 1,000, the interest rate 10% for three years. You're asked to find th four things. Number one, present value of an annuity, present value of an annuity due. Then part B, future value of an annuity, future value of an annuity due. So who remembers the formula for present value of an annuity? Periodic payment, one minus. 1 plus 1 plus R so this is a formula so our periodic payment in this case is 1000 our interest rate is 10 percent our n is the number of years three years the interest rate is 10 percent so when you compute that, this part here will give us an annuity value of 2.487. When you apply that, we get 2,287. This is because the periodic payment you're making of 1,000, um, 0, 1, 2, 3. So meaning 1,000 here, 1,000 there, 1,000 here, using a number line. When you discount each of these ones, this one you discounted, this one discounted. Ideally, it's supposed to give you 3,000, but because of time value of money, each of these ones will be small values. So collectively, you're going to get 2,487. This is what we call the present value of an annuity. Then to find the present value of an annuity due, who remembers what we do? We simply multiply the value we got, the present value of an annuity times one plus R. So 2487, 1 1.10, because it's 10%, because 5%, 1.05. Are we together? Any questions so far? Are you following? Anyone who's behind? Pamela, Brian, are we together? Daliso? I'm following. All right. Following. For the future value, we have a thousand kwacha. The time is three years and the interest is 10%. And our question is asking us to find the future value of an annuity, future value of an annuity due. So let's calculate these ones here. Oops. 
can try to remember the formula. Which one? No? Uh huh. Payment. One plus R to the power. N. That's one over the R. So here, one thousand. 1.10 to the power of 3 minus 1 over the 10%. <clears throat> are we given formulas? Yes, we are. Are we given table? Yes, we are given the tables. So when you compute that, it will give you 3.310, which is what? 3,310. So this is the future value of an annuity. And how do you find the future value of an annuity due? We simply multiply our answer times one plus R. So here we're going to have to compute this. Basically, this is roughly what your quiz was surrounding. So Let's answer one by one. Question number one. I'll start with the gents. What are we being asked for? And um, how do we go about it? Here's a question there. Let's understand and appreciate what was being asked. So we are given this question scenario and we are told Carl, who recently bought won a lottery 10,000, wants to buy a car in five years. Carl is missed that the car will cost 16,105 at that time. What interest rate must be? Must he end be able to afford the car? What is being asked for? What are we looking for? R, isn't it? So future value is equal to present value, one plus R to the power time. What are we given in this case? Future value and present value. Yes, what is the future value? 16105, present value, 10,000. 10, the rate we don't know, right? The time, five years. Divide this in there, we get 1.6105. Here we have one plus R to the power five. Who remembers what do we do at this stage? We reciprocate. Okay, so since it's the power five, We divide one over five on both sides. Are we following so far? Are we together? Yes, we are. Okay. Are, are you able to see my screen? Yes. So here we have 16, so we divide both sides, then 1 over 5 on both sides. So uh, this is 1.6 to the power 0 0.2. So in divide 1.6 to the power 0 0.2, we get 1.099. So when this one subtracts from this side, we're going to get R is equal to 0 0.0999, which is approximately 10% or 9.999%. You're seeing where this is coming from? Are we relating to what I was just teaching? Yes. All right. Second question is here. Please, I would want you to participate because that's the whole essence of you understanding the concepts here. 
So Bernard will receive 10,000 three years from now at 8% on its investment. The appropriate discount rate is 8%. What is the present value of his future cash flow? What are they asking for and what are we given? So future value is equal to present value, one plus R. So what do we have in there? Present value. Future value. We have the future value, yes, which is how much? 10,000. 10,000. Uh-huh. The present value, we don't know. Don't know. Mm -hmm. The interest rate is a discount rate, which is what? 8%. And the time? Uh, three years. Three, three years. years. So how do you find the present value? 10,000 over 1.08 to the power of 3. Okay, so that is how we landed ourselves on this level. I hope you, I don't need to calculate specifically, but you're following through, isn't it? Can I proceed, Pamela, are we together? Yes, it's only that you're a little bit fast that I'm following. I'm a little bit fast, okay. Charlotte, are we together? All right. So far, if we're okay, we can go to the third question here. And the third question, we have the following, a customer of this corporation wants to buy a bot today. Rather than paying immediately, he will pay 50,000 in three years. It will cost uh, 38,000 to build the bot immediately. What interest rate would Chafkin Corporation charge to neither gain a loss on the sale. All right, so what are we given in this uh, question? What are, they, what are they asking for? We're given a present value and a future value and the period of time, which is what? Three years. Okay. So what interest rate? That's what we are looking for. So we are given future value is equal to present value, one plus R to the bar time. So here our future value is what? 50,000. Our present value is 38, 610. Our interest rate, we don't know. Our time is three years. So we divide both sides, this side and this side. We're going to get 1.295. So how do we make our subject? Can somebody remember what we do? Reciprocate one over three on both sides, one over three on both sides. Okay, so when we power 1.295 to the power three, we're going to get 1.0899. Meaning what becomes the value of R? That we're going to get 
zero point eight nine nine nine, which is approximately nine percent. So this is the interest rate that we need, so that we'd never gain a loss. Yes, sir. All right. The paper was very easy. I don't know what challenges people had. It's time of being nervous. So we're now on question number four. Question number four, I'll ask any three people to lead us. So Brenda, Brian, and Charlotte, question number for what we have and what are we being asked. Suppose instead, suppose we're interested in purchasing an asset that costs 50,000 and currently have 12,000. If we can earn 12% 12 on the 25, how long until we have the 50,000? What are they asking for and what do we have? So we are we're looking for time. We already have uh, the current, uh, the present value and the future value. So the asset costs five fifty thousand kwacha. Uh, that's uh, future value, and we currently have twenty five thousand kwacha, which is the present value. So and the rate is twelve percent. I mean, in right. fact, it's actually fifty thousand kwacha. So we're trying to find out how long it's going to take us to earn. Uh, to grow twenty five thousand kwacha at twelve percent to fifty thousand kwacha. Okay, correct. Yeah. The the other partners, what do we do? How do we do the competitions? How do we find T? He's laid out what to do. Mm -hmm. Brenda, Charlotte. What do we do next? Divide both sides. Divide by. Uh huh. How do you find T at this point? Introduce logs. So, what is the value of T? By the way, you can use log or ln to still get the same answer. It's a natural log. So log two divided by log one point. So we'll find ourselves in such a situation here. T drops, divide both sides by log 1.12, we're going to find 6.116 years. Are we together? Yes. Right. So question number five. I'll ask the next two to continue. Uh, Can I just see the answer for question four? Question four. I just want to uh-huh. 6.116 years. It's time. Okay. All right. Okay, so question number five. What is the end of year worth if Jen Christine receives a stated annual interest? of 24% compounded monthly on a one quarter investment. What are we looking for? Daliso and Pamela. Mm -hmm. What are we given? It's a present value. Mm -hmm. One okay, present value is one quarter. 
No, I'm not interested. One four percent. The number of compoundings. Since it's monthly, how many times? It will be 12. Oh. 12. So how do you find the effective annual rate? We we'll multiply the effective annual rate times the present value to find our end of year wealth. So let's first calculate the effective annual rate. What's the formula for the effective annual rate? One plus R over M, M minus one. You remember this, yeah? Mm -hmm. So our interest rate is 24%. Monthly is 12 minus 1. So if we're computed, our effective annual rate will be 26.824%. So when you apply this, The one quarter. Okay. We are going to have this is an increase. We want to get the so this is like the present value itself, one plus R. One plus effective annual rate. The one quarter times one plus zero point two six eight. So this will be one quarter times one point two six eight. Okay, which is one point two six eight. Okay, so this gives us our final answer as shown. In here. So first find the effective annual rate, then end of year, you multiply one quarter times one plus R. So this is 1.268824. So you multiply these two, you get the future value, which is 1.27. That is how we calculate our future value. Well, Alternatively, you could simply just use the same formula as follows. Which are value is equal to present value one plus R over M M T. It's one year. So our present value is one quarter. Our interest rate is 24% compounded monthly, 12. Okay, so 12 times one. All right, so get that this is our effective annual rate. That's why we do have this bearing. So we have one quarter here times 1.27, which will give us a future value, which is 1.27. I hope we're together. All right, I have another class. Let me quickly rush through the last two. Question number six. Number six. Mark has just won. We'll go back to the first two, Brian and Charlotte. Mark has just won 50,000 lottery for 20 years. He is to receive his first payment a year from now. The state advertises this as the million dollar lottery because. One million US dollars is equal to 50 times 20. If the interest rate is 8%, what 
is the present value of the lottery. So what are they asking for? And what we have in that question. So we are looking at an annuity. So why is an annuity? He has just won 50. So Mark has just won a state lottery paying 50 thousand a year for 20 years so the periodic payment is how much fifty thousand periodic payment is fifty thousand so you get to receive his first payment a year from now so at the end of the year so it's that order I knew it so the time is what 20 years, all right, the interest rate is what, 8%, find the present value, the lottery to the source, present value annuity, remember the form of the present value annuity, periodic payment, one minus, one plus R to the power, time, over the interest rate, so here we have 50,000, one so eight percent one point zero eight to the power negative twenty over eight percent zero point zero eight so nine point eight one eight when you calculate this part so we're going to have fifty thousand times 9.818. So the present value of the annuity will be 490. So we'll find ourselves in this situation here. Repayment, 50,000. We did do, so we're going to get 490. Okay. Question number seven, we're given a pause, you put $3 per year in a Roth IRA. The account pays 6% interest per year. How much will you have when you retire? in 30 years how much will you have you retire in 30 years what is this to the opposite of what we're calculating is a future value of an annuity you put a periodic payment of what three thousand dollars per year at an interest rate of six percent how much will you have? You're going to retire in 30 years. So time is 30 years. So the future value of an annuity is given by what? Payment. Payment, yes. Oh, in the class. Then? Uh. One plus R to the power time minus one over R. 30,000, 1.06 to the power 30 minus one over 0 0.06. All right. So this will bring us to this position here where we're going to, in future, after three, 30 years, expect 237,000. Okay, lastly, we have question number eight. So question number eight, we have Danielle, 
will receive a four-year annuity of $500 per year beginning in the year six. If the interest rate is 10%, what is the present value of annuity? So this one is at the beginning, so it's an annuity due. So we calculate. So he arranged them very well that every topic in time value except amortization, which was missing. So what we have here, periodic payment, 500. Okay, the interest rate, 10%. And what is the time factor? Four year annuity, so time is four. So we're going to calculate this present value annuity payment 500. Now this one was a little bit tricky because it was paid at the beginning of the eighth year. So we're going to discount it by the interest rate time factor of six. So this is 1.10 to the power negative what? Four over 10%, 0. what? One zero, then times 1.10 to the power negative. So we're going to discount this one after calculating it. So this will give us 894.653. Eight ninety four point six five three. I'll explain this more as we do stock valuation because it is more elaborate.